Candy corn is a new color that is gaining a strong following in the U.S. and abroad. But what is it exactly? Well, let's start off with what it isn't. First off, it isn't a toll bunt, nor is a toll bunt needed to create it. The toll bunt was started in the 1970s in Germany and has gone through a lot of refinement. Currently, the Polish Breeders Club is working towards getting it into the American Poultry Association standard. It is essentially a gold Polish with the addition of mottled. Secondly, it is not a creel. Creel Polish have a ton of confusion around them, and I plan on making a separate video for it. But to summarize, it is actually golden cuckoo, and genetically is brown-red with barring. This cochin is similar to the pattern of what a creel Polish should look like. The second picture shows that pattern on a Polish. From this point forward in the video, I'll refer to creels by the more correct term golden cuckoo. This gamecock is brown-red patterned, and the second gamecock is a modified brown-red, which I believe explains some of the color variations currently being expressed in both candy corns and golden cuckoos, but I'll get back to that later. You may say that there is no brown-red Polish out there, but that technically is incorrect. Current consensus is that all Polish are brown-red at their base, birchen in the case of silver lace due to the silver gene. This can and does leak out from time to time, expressing part or all of the brown-red pattern, like in these two birds. Barring is needed as the second element in both golden cuckoo and candy corn. The barring comes from the white-crested cuckoo. This gene is sex-linked inherited. This means that depending on which parent has the gene, it will determine which offspring will inherit it. Also, males can have two copies of the gene, leading to what is commonly called a double cuckoo or double barred, whereas females will either have the gene or not. If they don't, they'll be a white-crested black and will only produce white-crested blacks when bred to other white-crested blacks. The barring gene affects leg color, so don't fight it. You simply cannot get blue legs with the barring. So what delineates golden cuckoo from candy corn? Lacing. Candy corns have it, golden cuckoos don't. To be specific, lacing is found in golden Polish. Like tollbunts, this new pattern is based on the golden. Keep in mind that tollbunts and their modeling is not needed in breeding candy corn and only further muddies the gene pool. Before I continue, I'd like to put in for a word on the established varieties. Without them, we cannot expect to continue and improve the new colors. I encourage anyone working with these new colors to keep a flock of laced birds and work on them as a separate line. Don't use new birds from the new color in this flock, but keep them pure so you have something solid to outcross back to when needed. If you're curious, I do plan on making a companion video that will shed some light on the history of the candy corn and the golden cuckoo in the U.S. So let's dissect the candy corn a little. Due to the varying degree of pattern, currently, don't be surprised if you hatch out solid gold, buff cuckoo, sometimes called a lemon bard, Cuckoos, Buff Columbians, and a whole lot of other colors. It would be beneficial to pair mate and keep records so you know what pairings are producing superior fowl. Because of the barring, they will have white beaks and legs. Currently, as said, there are a lot of variation in the flocks. Most of that is due to the varying degrees of the quality of the lacing. Laced birds can be produced out of candy corns if the male has only one barring gene, as half of his daughters will not inherit the barring gene. Pay close attention to these pullets, and their lacing will tell you where the lacing quality stands in your flock. Also pay attention to the ground color. Ground color is a central color on a laced feather. Golds have a bad habit of having lighter shafts or lighter feathers that have sort of this starburst fade to them. Breed away from these traits. Once you get the barring in, you don't need to keep adding barring as long as you're using at least one parent bird that is barred. I would advise anyone working on their candy corns to select heavily against solid white feathers and solid black feathers. I would also recommend using single barred males in the brood pens as double bards are very faded in their markings because it is two copies of a diluting gene. This makes it difficult to assess the quality of the markings. Using a single barred male also as stated will produce some laced offspring which can be useful in later matings. In a properly marked candy corn, the feathers should look basically the same through the entire body. One of the biggest clues to the quality of the lacing is the size of the black tips on the feathers. 
fat black tips indicate that the bird does not have all of the group of genes in homozygous pairings needed for a properly laced feather. Lacing is complex. It takes multiple genes in same pairs or homozygous pairs to produce proper lacing. This is why you see golds that have an almost spangled look. Lacing should be even thickness all around the feather and go all the way down to the shaft. Poor lacing can also be noted in the tail and saddle feathers of hens when they sometimes show hints of what looks like the double laced pattern that is found in the partridge color in breeds such as Wyandots and Cochins. Males with poor lacing are prone to solid black tails or heavily blackened tails. Due to the fact that there is buff lace in the early history of the candy corn, it is common to see really orange males. This is because of some of the modifiers found in buff lace that help give it that rich, vibrant gold buff color. Don't use buff lace, however, because they add an unwanted gene, dominant white. A brown ochre bay color is more the proper direction. Keep in mind that the barring will dilute this some. The barring will interrupt the lacing on the edges of the feathers, so it is important to handle the birds and inspect them up close. Getting back to that gamecock earlier, there are genes that can modify a brown-red pattern into other patterns. I suspect that some of these same genes are in candy corns and golden cuckoos. This could explain why the flight feathers on some golden cuckoos are brown and why this hen seems to be showing a different pattern. I'm on the fence about this hen. I don't know if she is brown-red with too much gold in her breast or if she's showing partial expression of an allele other than the brown-red birchen allele. Also breed away from solid white feathers in the crest as it is a remnant of the white-crested cuckoo and is not needed to further the pattern. Currently, the consensus is to breed towards the self-patterned bird. Self simply means color pattern that is the same through the entire body. The last thing I want to touch on is type. Type is the physical structure of the bird, and without it, a color simply cannot be accepted into an established breed. Avoid tails that are too high, crests that are too low, lopsided, or sparsely feathered. Pay attention to leg length, toe position, earlobe color, cavernous nostrils, wing carriage. It's all what makes a Polish. I hope this video helps to clear up some of the mysteries of the breed and the variety. Stay tuned for more educational videos like this, and if you like it, share it with your friends. Thank you.